Thanks to Curiosity Stream for supporting my channel. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Jordan, and this is the third video in what has become an unintentional series on the intersection of productivity and my ADHD. You can check out the first two videos on how I self-study technical content and the tools that get me through the workday down below. And if you're new here, consider subscribing and leave a comment with other video ideas that you would like to see in the new year. So one of the things that I've talked about in past videos is that I have tried a ton of different productivity tools over the years and have started to narrow down to the systems that work really well for me. And since I already made a video on the tools that work really well for me, I thought it might also be interesting to make a video on the tools that didn't. Now, I want to be upfront and say the point of this video is not to like dunk on any of these tools. In fact, I'm actually hoping that by talking about why these tools didn't work very well for me. Some of you might find some tools that work really well for you specifically for the reasons that they didn't work for me. So first on the list is digital to-do list apps. I have used Todoist, to do, as well as several other ones. And every time I start to keep track of all of my projects and tasks in a digital to-do list app, I run into two main issues. The first is that I end up making infinite daily to-do lists because there's literally nothing stopping me from doing so. And then I get up in the morning, sit at my desk, and immediately feel extremely overwhelmed by the 20 to 30 tasks that I've set out for myself for the day and end up procrastinating. And second, and this is a little bit more of an ADHD thing, but I find on the opposite end of the spectrum that because I can't see the list, because it's not just in my face at my desk, I will essentially forget that it exists in the first place and get distracted by doing something else. This is part of one of those ADHD things that I like to call lack of object permanence. I can see something that's immediately in front of me and know that it is there, know that the to-do list is sitting on my desktop, but as soon as the phone goes in the pocket or the thing goes out of sight, it may as well have ceased to exist. And that's why I tend to rely on paper to-do lists these days, because it physically constrains my ability to make a list. You can only make a list as long as, in this case, this little piece of paper. It's always easy to see sitting on my desk, and then I actually keep a master to-do list in a notebook that is also on my desk, but that I can't see on a day-to-day -day basis, so I don't get overwhelmed by all of the 8 million things that are currently on it. Interestingly, the next one is a productivity tool that I actually often see recommended specifically for people with ADHD, and that is using a reward system to incentivize you to finish tasks. So the most common way that I see this come up is for studying, where you reward yourself with an M&M or a gummy bear or usually some other piece of candy for studying for 15 minutes, and in doing so you end up studying for 2-3 hours when you might not have otherwise. Now I think part of this is that I don't have a huge sweet tooth, so the idea of motivating myself with a bunch of sugar just isn't really a great incentive for me to want to keep working. But the other issue that I run into on the opposite end of the spectrum is that it also relies on impulse control, which I do not have. <laughs> Basically, if there were a bowl of Skittles or something in front of me where I could only have a few Skittles every time I finished a block of work, I would finish the entire bowl of Skittles before I finish the first block of work. Next up is another digital system, and this is digital Pomodoro timers. I actually find the Pomodoro method to be a fairly helpful way of getting me to do work that I don't necessarily want to do. Writing is usually at the top of that list, even though I enjoy it once I've started doing it. I actually find the Pomodoro technique, or the general technique of just using a timer to set a limit on how long you're going to work on something, to be pretty helpful, especially for tasks that I've been avoiding or feel overwhelmed by because I can just set a timer for 15 minutes or 20 minutes and tell myself that that is all that you have to do on this project right now. And usually what happens after that is that I actually end up getting into a rhythm and end up working for much longer than the timer that I said originally was for. However, when it comes specifically to Pomodoro apps, for whatever reason, not being able to see the amount of time I have left, because I usually don't keep my phone face up because that also ends up being distracting, is actually more stressful than not having a timer at all because I always want to know how much time there is and so I end up checking my phone constantly and getting distracted. Alternatively, I will set a timer on my phone and then get distracted on my laptop and realize three hours later that I've actually missed all of the timers going off and now I'm behind on whatever it is I was trying to do. So instead of using apps, I actually have a physical timer. I got this on Amazon. It's actually, I think, one that 
is commonly recommended for ADHD. It's super visual, so you can always see how much time you have left at a glance, and it makes it super easy to essentially set a timer for even five minutes if it's something that I really don't want to do, and get started where I can see everything that's going on. All right, this one actually really used to work for me in terms of helping me stay on task, and now it really doesn't, and that is listening to music or podcasts while at work. I think this used to work a lot better for me before I was taking medication for my ADHD because having music on or having a podcast on essentially occupied that part of my brain that was prone to distraction, allowing the rest of my brain to actually stay on task and do whatever I need to get done. However, now that I am on medication and through a combination of medication and therapy to develop better focus techniques, I actually find it distracting, especially for high flow state or high executive function tasks. So for me, that's things like writing. And I end up actually listening to basically nothing. I'll have my noise canceling headphones on, but I won't have anything playing in them. I'm just using the noise canceling feature because having that level of quiet is what makes it a lot easier to get work done. There are still some tasks, work tasks, that I find go better when I have background noise, but they tend to be things that are boring and repetitive, where I need something in the background to essentially motivate me to keep doing it, and I also don't really need to be using 100% of my focus to get it done. In short, I've learned over the years that a lot of the tools that I use to keep my life on track don't really work for me anymore, and as frustrating as it was to have to iterate through all of these tools in order to get to where I am now, I do now have a system that actually works pretty well for me. And if you want to learn more about that system, including some bonus content that you can't find on YouTube, you should sign up for Nebula and Curiosity Stream. If you haven't heard, Nebula is a streaming platform built by me and some of my friends, including people like Tirzu, Simon Clark, and Marquez Brownlee. On Nebula, you can find ad-free versions of all of our videos, plus bonus content in our Nebula Plus videos. You'd also get access to our Nebula Originals, which you can't find anywhere else, including a very good trivia show where I competed against Brian from Real Engineering and Dave from City Beautiful in a bunch of fun and bizarre challenges, including trying to build an IKEA chair while answering math questions. And the best way to sign up for Nebula is actually through CuriosityStream, who are kindly sponsoring today's video. CuriosityStream is a subscription streaming service with thousands of documentaries and nonfiction videos. In fact, if you're interested in learning more about ADHD, you should check out their mini-documentary, Women with ADHD, which explores the impact that ADHD has specifically on women. CuriosityStream loves independent creators and wants to help us grow our platform, so if you click on the link in the description or use my promo code JORDAN, you can get access to CuriosityStream for 26% off their annual plan, with Nebula included for free for as long as you are a CuriosityStream member. That's less than $15 a year. Signing up for CuriosityStream and Nebula is a great way to directly support my channel while getting to watch my videos ad-free and getting access to all of my bonus content, so sign up at CuriosityStream.com JORDAN or using the promo code JORDAN. Otherwise, you can find some of my earlier videos on productivity and ADHD up here. You can follow me on my various socials down here, and I will see you all next week. Bye!